Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to use a couple of different sets here and do something completely different for me. <laughs> so hopefully this works out okay. Actually, I really like this card in the end. It's, it's, it just worked. Um, but it was a bit of an experiment. So I have my... Um, I'm just showing you a couple of products there, but obviously everything will be listed below. And what I have here is the little pickup by Honeybee Stamps that I have stamped and then die cut out with my brother's scanning cut, um, right up to the edge of the of the image. And I'm going to use a few colours um, for my pumpkins. So I have Y35, YR15, YR07, and E15. Again, the names of the colours will be below, um, if that's any interest to you. But it's basically, I like I like the pumpkins that have more of a brown tone in them. Um, you, you know, there's all sorts that you can do. Like, you can add bits of red, and, and I've seen different variations. But I like it when it's got that sort of slightly brown hint in there. It just works for me. Anyway, so another easy way to sort of help hold tiny images like this down <laughs> they were really tiny um is to use a piece of washi tape with the sticky side up and then just tape those ends down to your table and then you can stick those things to it it'll hold long enough for you to do something like this especially if they're small enough um and you know if you've got fat fingers like me and you can't hold on to it <laughs> while you're coloring it in then oh, that works um so I did the blending uh, on the like, main part of the pumpkin, but the stalks I just coloured in with the e E15 just to colour them in. I didn't do any shading on them. So again, going through all the pumpkins that are in the back of the truck. Now, in the little pickup um, stamp set, you actually get a whole bunch. You get the truck and you get a few extra doodads, like the little pumpkins. Um, but you also get all these extra, I mean, all these like things that you can put into the truck. So it's so cool. So what I did was I stamped the truck. Um, and if you, if you get the die set, it will die cut each of those pieces out individually as well. So, but if you, if you want to do a bit of, um, like one layer cards or you want to, um, do like I did here where I cut the whole image out as one piece instead of having all these little bits then what I did was I stamped the truck and then I used a piece of post-it tape <laughs> and I just or post-it note and I just lined it up with the top edge of the um, truck and um, just leaving it slightly um, exposed if that makes sense so it's not sort of covering the actual top so I didn't want to line like a white line anywhere um, I wanted to look like the pumpkins actually coming out of the truck and um, because it is a straight line on the back of the truck I could do that line up the post-it note and then stamp the pumpkins perfect all in one so things like that make it so much easier so masking doesn't have to be that fiddly having to cut everything out think of masking things off in different ways and where you might just need a straight line to do that makes it so much simpler when you're doing certain images and things um or if you've got like baskets or trucks or things like that so i then decided to do the truck in uh, i went through a few different colors uh but i decided because this is kind of an autumn card i wanted it sort of autumnal autumnal can't say the word in color as well so I decided on R35, R37, and then R59 for my darkest one, and it actually turned out alright. <laughs> so I really wasn't sure because I don't, like most people, I don't have all the colours, but I also have this sort of half mix of things where I might have two, but not the third darkest colour or something like that. So I kind of had to make my colours work today. <laughs> so, um, but it did, it worked out just fine. So again, I'm just doing it in sections because it is, although it's not a huge image, it's a big image to colour, if that makes sense. Um, so just work in sections. Um, I did like the back panel, then I did each of the, I uh, don't know what the name of this thing's called, the bit that goes over the wheel. I don't know. <laughs> is it a hubcap? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know cars at all, uh, clearly. 
So I just, but I just looked at the image and worked in sections. So you can do that with any of your images that you have, if they are sort of larger when it comes to doing this sort of coloring. If it's something like water coloring, I find that it's so much easier to water color because it seems to flow better because of what you're doing. Um, but when it comes to like markers and pencils and things like that, um, working in sections makes more sense for me anyway. So doing the same thing all the way around, just doing a light, medium and dark color. Um, I'm getting more and more used to doing this with my Copics and making more use of them. Um, I usually, I used to just do two colors and you know, a dark, a dark and a light kind of thing, but I sometimes couldn't get that blend quite right. And I think it's because I wasn't using enough markers. Um, so it, I think three is kind of a, it's a magic number. Um, Three is kind of the, the middle ground where you, you get like a, a light, a medium and a dark. Um, and then obviously there are those amazing ones, <laughs> people out there who do, well, I mean, I did four for the pumpkins, but normally I would do three probably as, as a max just because of the, well, just because I'm learning still. So, but I went round all of it with the red and I think it turned out quite cute. And then I used a couple of greys. I've got C5 c7 and c3 um, i know you can't see it on screen there but it, again everything's below and um i just used that to you know color the wheels in and the oh, those are the hubcaps <laughs> wait i really don't know cars anyway and then bg10 for the um the windows because i needed that to look like it was colored in but i didn't want any color per se so it's like a very very pale 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 blue kind of tint almost and then there's the little truck and then i used a sakura gel pen just to give it a bit of sparkle <laughs> why not um actually wouldn't work doesn't work as well with this i should have maybe made them shiny or something anyway I'm waffling again so i've got the uh, mfts um drifts and hills i think it's called uh stencil and i just wanted this for a bit of ground i needed my truck to be grounded so um, i'm using some walnut stain uh, distress ink just to give me a bit of an like ground for for my truck <laughs> i just said the same thing to us um and then just cleaning that up and that's the that's as difficult as that gets. I mean, you could draw this on a piece of paper and cut that wavy line out. I mean, it's it's easy. I love stencils, but if you don't have one, there are other ways to do these sort of things. And then I've got um, some squeezed lemonade, some pumpkin, carved pumpkin, and some barn door that I'm going to create the background with. So this is going to be like my sun... I think I'm calling it a sunset... I think I called it a sunset rather than a sunrise. Um, that's kind of what I was going for. That sort of orangey red, again, bringing in that sort of autumnal color um, into the, the background. But I didn't want it to be dark, which I know is weird for me, but I didn't want it to be dark. So I wanted that sort of nice, I don't know, just a nice autumn sky. So I'm going back and forth between the squeezed lemonade and the carved pumpkin to get the blend right. Um, and then I will bring in the barn door in a minute. Um, these are all the distressings as opposed to the oxides. Oxides are beautiful, but they also have like a more chalky look, which I didn't want. The, the distressings have this sort of much more vibrant look to them, which I love too. So... <laughs> I wanted that sort of look rather than that chalk chalkiness um although that would look fabulous on here as, as well so so again just blending between each of those colors try and get a bit of a smoothish blend um and i'm working on my last panel my last one of my distress uh, my um tim holtz watercolor paper so i definitely need to get more of that and then I spritz with some water with a distress sprayer. Of course, of course, when do I not? And then I'm going to heat set this so that I can sort of try and move on to the next bit. Um, there's a lot of drying time in this card. There's this part, and then there's two types of texture paste that need to dry, um, or like 
yeah, texture paste, I suppose you can call them that. Um, and you will, I'll explain those as we go. So just drying that off and then trying to flatten it out. But I wanted some more water, so I, some more texture, sorry. So I, the second one that I sprayed on, I didn't use my heat tool. I dried it with a, like mopped it up with the paper towel. And that gives a slightly different look because it lifts the color off rather than just giving these cool sort of colored blocks blotches kind of thing i don't know how to explain it you kind of have to <laughs> do it to see it but it's um it creates a different layer of texture which is key thing layers on layers on layers as long as each layer is dry between you'll be fine it, you'll create fabulous stuff so i'm using one of the um layer mini layering sets with the trees this is actually a christmas set but i'm going to use some texture paste in the crackle and i'm grabbing some of that now because this is white this is kind of ingenious and just clever um, and you know just sounds normal to do and I'm using some distress paint in peeled paint for the green of the tree I do bring in some rustic wilderness in a bit because this although I like the shade that it created with the um, peeled paint it wasn't dark enough for me and I wanted it a bit darker than that so Ironically, I should have just gone with the <laughs> with the rustic wilderness in the first place, but actually I like the combo of these two colors. It kind of mixed really well. So once I'd mixed it, um, now I probably should have thought this through a little bit better than I did, but I didn't. And so I do get this kind of all over the place. In a minute, you'll see my tree's got like some extra, um, because it lifted, some of the paste went under the stencil. So it's got like less definition on the left-hand side there, but... It's fine this was an experiment i didn't know if this was going to work out but i just went with it and then by the third tree it's always the way with me by the third one um i kind of knew what i was doing and i had this down to a fine art but you know <laughs> i do these things on camera so we can experiment together because i like to do that and show you guys this is real life this is what happens when i try these things <laughs> so um and i you know i encourage you to do the same so this is the crackle i yeah that's the crackle one now first point wash your stencil straight away or at least put it in a bowl of water or something like that because i did find that i had to um scrub a bit to get the paint to completely come off it comes off it's fine but bear in mind that it's paint within paste and once paste goes hard it goes hard <laughs> so you just want to wash those things straight away and then um i even though that's still the trees are still wet, I am taking some tech, uh, some grit paste in the opaque, um, and I could have used the translucent one. Thinking about it, but I used the opaque one, and I'm using some vintage photo. And again, I should have used the darker one. <laughs> so I'm using. Uh, I will bring in some walnut stain um, as well because I wanted a bit of a darker color, um, and I'd also used walnut stain. To ink that bottom edge now the inking the bottom edge was also just a um i guess like just a foundation so that if there's any of that area sticking through you're not going to see it um as much as if i'd left that area white if that makes sense so i'm just slapping on i mean literally <laughs> chucking the uh, paste on to start with i kind of i was going to sort of pat it on but I started off by, I then changed my mind, sorry, and um, just sort of spread it on as much as I could um, where I wanted it, following the line of like the hills and or the road or whatever this is. And, um, and then just, I'll go back and sort of tap over the top to create a bit of texture. Like it's already got grit in it, so it's like textured, but then I'm, tapping lightly over the top and it gives it even more texture so um yeah so you can already see there's a bit of crackling going on there because it was starting to dry it was kind of hot here <laughs> so, so i'm just going to show you when it is dry when it did dry it created these beautiful crazy cracking uh, cracks in the tree which gave it lots of texture and then obviously the ground has all that lovely grit that we made so it was just the coolest thing. <laughs> so I'm now going to take a distressed crayon. There's a lot of distress today. Um, 
in the walnut stain and I'm actually going to put a little bit on certain areas of the tree I mean I do do the whole tree um, and then I will just rub that in and it actually rubs into the cracks that are on the tree and it's just the coolest thing ever <laughs> um, it's very very easy to rub into them as well um, and you can go back over areas and all that sort of thing so you've got a little bit of time to sort of move it around um, and get it where you want it but they do dry kind of quickly so um, you kind of have to do it and then rub it into the cracks and then job done but it looks so cool <laughs> it's just so much texture so i was chuffed and it got me to play with my distress crayons again which i haven't well have i pulled them out recently i think i might have but anyway and then i decided to take the hickory smoke one um and go a little bit over like really gently over the top of the some of the the bits of the ground and again it just gives us some more texture again it's just all these different layers add to what it looks like and i think that's a key thing when you want to do this type of crafting so the next thing i want to do is just ink the edges of course <laughs> um, with the walnut stain um, distress ink i just inked everything around the edges easy peasy and it just gives it that that cohesive look for the whole project so everything looks like it's meant to look like it goes together so here again there's these teeny tiny little pumpkins <laughs> they, they were teeny tiny but because this wasn't um trying to color them in this this is a little easier to to ink and then i have used the newton's nook stamp that says hey there pumpkin <laughs> and stamped it on the on some nina desert storm cardstock which is the same as my base card which i'm also going to ink around the edges now I did realize once I'd inked that actually the front, the piece of cardstock with the scene on it is actually the same size as an A2 card, which is what this is. Um, but actually I still like that I inked the edges because if I, and I do stick it down slightly off, then it doesn't matter. It's got that same coloring around the edges as opposed to the, you know, the, the plain Nina sticking out kind of thing. So now just deciding where I'm going to put all my little bits. So I decided to get them in place so I had an idea um, because I wanted to make sure I knew where I was going to put the little sentiment block. Again, this was just easy. I just stamped it on some Nina and then cut around the edges. Um, you can use paper trimmer. I used scissors. Um, really easy. And then some tape on the back, but I also wanted to add a oh comedy hour. <laughs> everything pinged everywhere I even lost the pumpkin but I found him and uh yeah I wanted to add a little bit of something so I added a staple to the sign so although it's stuck down it's just another little bit of something on the card um just for a bit of bit more interest I think is is you know I don't know it just added something in it I think it was a nice touch so um little things like that will will help um when you're trying to sort of make your cards or your backgrounds or whatever it is you're doing just a little bit more interesting um and it's fun so <laughs> and so got some tape on the back there and then just lining everything up with the front of the card and then sticking it down and like I say i did stick it slightly slightly off it's fine <laughs> you can't see it because i inked the edges so it's nice um and then taking some foam dots now because I am going to um, pop up the truck. That's the only bit that's going to get popped up. But because we're going onto texture, onto watercolor cardstock, onto you know slightly warped cardstock because we've been playing with it with different texture paste, which are which are you know obviously wet when they start off, so it can warp the paper. Same as the um, obviously the ink and spritzing it and everything else. So what I do is I take all the backers off the foam, and then I add some glue to the back of each of the foam dots and when you stick this down one you have a little bit of room to move it to where you want it um it, you know in case you don't get it quite right but also it will help to bond the foam dot to the grit paste and the texture of the tree and that sort of thing um the rest of it was okay because again i was just using the glue and i just popped a couple of the pumpkins off to the left and right um and it just 
happen to work out quite well. Um, with things like pumpkins, or in this case it's pumpkins, but it could be other things, if you angle them at different angles, so like the stalks go in different directions, if that makes sense, um, it just again gives it more interest and it just looks quite cool so and more natural I think so there you go guys it's very easy to do it is time consuming because it, you have to wait for the layers to dry so obviously this took a little while but honestly it's quite hot here so it didn't take that long to dry so it depends where you are but very easy to do you guys can do this honest and if you only have text paste and you need to add grit Try and find either like really fine sand or I'm sure there's other things. If you Google it, I'm sure there's ways to sort of make that more gritty if you don't have actual grit paste. I love the grit paste though. <laughs> it's such cool stuff. Anyway, until next time, guys. Have a happy day. Bye.